All right, first up, I want to see how Baylor's going to respond. You know, they were 6-0, and rolling, hadn't lost a game. They lose for the first time. They've been kicked. They're down on the turf. They're on the ropes. Inter insert whatever cliche you want yeah. right there. But this team, they have a little adversity. Now, they've been dealing with a lot of adversity since about <laughs> May. But how are they going to respond against a team that really wants to beat you in TCU? I'm really curious to see what kind of Baylor team we're going to see today. Yeah, first time all year we've seen that. I really want to see how much chemistry Seth and KD will have. You know, didn't really connect on a lot of balls uh, last week. Didn't, really haven't had great chemistry this whole year. I mean, a lot of overthrown balls, you know, receivers not running consistent route, and we question their effort and, and what they're doing in practice. I hope they respond uh, well, just like Dan said. But, you know, this team is not clicking. They seem very distracted. And I just hope TCU is not the benefactor of that today. Can you believe it, ladies and gentlemen? Terrence Ganaway not talking about the run game. <laughs> I am. Last week, I want to see Shock Linwood and Terrence Williams. They disappeared in the fourth quarter. Shock had just one carry in the second half for two yards. Terrence Williams, he had 146 yards in the game through the third quarter and only 34 on five carries in the fourth. Jim Grobe said they were a little banged up, but still, in a game like that, you think you would want your guys out there. I want to see how they look today, and might we see the same? Might they disappear late in the game? Because Baylor's going to need those guys. Yeah, they are going to need those guys today. And you know who else they need? They need Seth Russell to be at his best. And Seth Russell been dealing with concussion-like symptoms since after that Texas game at dinner that night. He started to suffer with some of those symptoms. So the question is, is Seth Russell completely healthy? Is there going to be a little lingering effect from that? And are they going to let him run the football? He ran the football all over Texas. Long touchdown runs, jumping over guys, everything else. Are they going to dial that back a little bit because of the concussion-like symptoms that he dealt with last week? So the question for me is, can Seth Russell play well today, and how will they utilize him in the passing game? And they need him in the passing game. As Terrence said, they they just looked a little off a lot this year. They haven't hit a lot of deep balls. It's not really been a big part of their offense, frankly. Yeah. Yeah, it's been uh, a little different. Our uh, opening drive brought to you by the Waco Mattress Center. We appreciate their sponsorship again this season. All right, so we're here at uh, McLean Stadium with Lynn Elliott, former NFL kicker, former Dallas Cowboy. People love the Cowboys. You want a Super Bowl with the Cowboys, but you've seen the three of us. <laughs> Are we making anything today? I'm going to say that you're going to make about 5% of your kicks today. <laughs> So 95% of the time, you're going to be unsuccessful. Well, the kicker well, from a chance. There is a chance. So you're saying there there's is a chance. chance. Yes. We yes. Are, we have, One in a million. <laughs> we don't do this very often, but we wanted to give it a shot, show you just how tough it is. Uh, after all, the people have been, you know, giving the kicker, Baylor, a tough time. It, it's not as easy as it looks. No, 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 sir. We're, we're going to probably find out here in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Troy, I think you can go first, right? Oh, goody. Oh, all goody. Right. All yeah. right, let's get to it. You want to hit it with your laces. Up here. Yes. You okay. Want to the best you can. You want to hit I haven't it hit one of them. The up bottom there. third of the football with your laces. All right. Let's see. Here we go. Look at that. Hey, wide right. <laughs> so, we're, get, we're getting there. Short. Oh. Don't stop when you kick it. Get through it. Oh. That was not good. Just visualize yourself being Sebastian Janikowski. <laughs> there you go. Okay. I'm getting worse. There you go. All worse. Right. We saw what Troy did. What do I need to do differently to actually get it to go through the upright? Yeah, so the question is, do we want to make it or do we want to? That's the goal. Yeah. yeah. So I would go your first shot. I would go with a toe punch. <laughs> Still failed. Theoretically, we want to hit right here. Okay. But you hit right. You missed. So it. I'm 0 for 1, but I'm going to be 4 for 5 by the time Yeah. Done. <laughs> Still hit it on the side. You ready to signal? When you're getting closer, you still hit that one off your ankle. <laughs> close. Close. Definitely getting close. One more. Straight on, try to hit it. Uh, if you want to win this game, this contest, you're, you're going to need to hit it with the, your toes at the bottom. Oh. I'm hitting it with the top of my foot every time. It's so. Don't run so fast to it. Okay. And then really concentrate on where you're hitting the football, which is the bottom third of the ball. Okay. Mm. 
Well, you did it hard and straight. Hard and straight. <laughs> One more. Nope. We'll, we'll, close, we'll close the book on that. Chris has the physical ability. He kicks it as high as anybody. He kicks it as far as anybody. He makes game-winning field goals. But he's thinking about the consequence. If I miss the next kick, right. I'm going to lose my job. Right. And that's what makes it tough. And you can't do anything without confidence. And right. if you walk out on the field going, I don't know if I'm going to make this, then it's already over. We, we didn't have anything to cheer about, yeah. so we want you to kick one. Yeah, like can you kick one? Like. I can kick one. All right, kick one. One. it's already set up. We yeah. got you ready yeah. to go. This one's for Chris, though, right there here. There you go. Um, he almost lost our football. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, thank you so much. Yeah. There you Appreciate go. it. Yeah. So last week was a tough loss. How do you bounce back from that loss? Well, we need to bounce back. I think uh, more than anything else, we've got to play better. Uh, we had a great opportunity to win on the road last week. It's tough to win on the road. And we just made too many mistakes. So I think, uh, you know, we've hopefully corrected some of those mistakes and we'll play better today. Seth Russell showed a few signs and symptoms of possibly a concussion last game. How is he today and will he be 100%? Well, I was surprised because I saw Seth in the locker room after the game and kind of, you know, tried to pick him up a little bit, and he seemed fine to me. Uh, and, I, I, you know, I think he even feels like maybe it wasn't a concussion. It was more dehydration. You know, it was a long game. seemed like the game took forever. Uh, but he was fine right away, went right through all the percussion, or, uh, concussion protocols and seemed to have no problems whatsoever. So he's had a good week of practice. There's been a little bit of rain in Central Texas this morning. How do you think a wet field may affect the run game today? Well, I think it's a great uh, thing to have field turf. You know, <laughs> if we had grass, natural grass, it would be a little bit of a concern. But I think uh, by the time we kick off, we ought to have a great field for uh, both running and throwing. Fantastic. Well, Coach, good luck today. A little bit about what you've been doing since football here at Baylor and wh what you're doing now. Yeah, well, thank you all for having me. Uh, so, yeah, after I graduated here in 09 from Baylor, I uh, had a few years I kept trying to play. I actually played for a season over in Italy in the Italian Football League. Uh, made it to the championship over there. We had a good little run for six months. But uh, since then, been back in Houston, uh, married uh, with a kid on the way. Uh, Baylor recruiting class, 20, class of 2034. So, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, just living in Houston, trying to transition, uh, be a grown up, whatever that means. Well, I'm going to go back to playing football in Italy for a second. <laughs> <Yeah. That laughs> Most people that, do. Yeah. That sounds awesome. Yeah. I mean, like one of the coolest countries in the world, and you get to do what you love. I and mean, what was that experience like? Yeah, so we were based in Catania, Sicily, uh, played in the Italian football leagues. We played in like Rome, Parma, uh, Bolzano, places like that. And uh, it was great. You know, there's three Americans per team, and the rest are all Italians that are just kind of doing it for the love of the game. And so you're half player, half coach, and it's just so much fun to kind of you know share share your knowledge about football and kind of bring the love of the game to them. And you know, I got to play offense, defense, kicker. I saw you doing the kicking segments. I can show you all things too if you all want. Right. Yeah, well, <laughs> like, I can't help you there. Yeah, I got to, get to play every position. It's just it was just a lot of fun. It was a good way. It was my last team experience of football, and it was a good way to go out. And what a neat place to do that yeah. over there in Europe. Yeah, actually, I we got married four days before I. Uh, shipped out over there so it was basically like a five six month honeymoon so oh, yeah. i got a free deal on that one that was pretty nice well played on your part yeah exactly yeah. so one quick question did you wear the red contacts in europe like you did at baylor i did not i retired the red contacts after i finished up at baylor so okay. All right. I, uh nike stopped producing them and i you know i, I left that in college i had to grow up a little bit <laughs> all right let's talk about this year's team Obviously, it's well documented. All the distractions they're going through. Do you worry about their ability to kind of put that to the side today? Uh, you know, I'm hoping they can kind of turn over new leaf. I think you know, with the distractions that came out fresh last Friday, and kind of you can see how that affected the team. Just the cloud. Uh, hanging over them on Saturday. I hope that was a wake-up call for them to say, hey, let's get back to the basics, let's play football, let's just do what we do, do and uh, go out and have fun. Have you seen anything defensively that gives you some optimism that they'll be able to turn things around a little bit and be a little better here in the next few weeks as a former defensive player yourself? Uh, yeah, I, I didn't think we did a good job tackling yesterday, or excuse me, last last week, and you know, I think that's something that can kind of easily be corrected if you actually really want to work on. I think, I know that got hammered by the coaches this week. Uh, when you give up 237 yards rushing to one player, you know, just as a defensive player, your pride, you know, it starts kind of tinging at the back of your neck to come back and have a good week of practice so you can get ready for the next week. So uh, a lot of that is just run fit from the safety. Yep. Can you please tell us, America, you know, the safety and the, the corners, they have a lot of run support. And what are you looking at as a safety coming up and filling the gap? The biggest thing that, you know, I, I learned during football, it was, it was stress, was use your help. Use your teammates. You got 11 guys you don't need to do all on your own. So like on that one play where uh, Deontay Freeman came up and uh, bounced outside, 
for a touchdown. It was like a seven or eight yard run. The, the safety came up kind of flat footed, didn't force his guy to the inside. You got nine guys to the inside helping you. Use your help, make him cut inside, and use those guys as they start flowing to the ball. You let them bounce outside, and you got no, no help there. I mean, that's the big thing, kind of like you touched on, which is using your help, vice tackling, squeezing the, squeezing the fits, and using the guys around you. It's a team game. It's a team game for a reason, you know? You don't have to do it on your own. If you're not careful, they're going to make you suit up today. <laughs> I, believe me, if I had any eligibility left, I, I'd be knocking on the doors. Jordan Lake, we appreciate you stopping by today. Thank you so much, and uh, best of luck moving forward, and congratulations on the, uh, the child on the way. No, thank you so much. Thanks, guys. We Stick appreciate em. you being here. Absolutely. Circumstances in which we're talking now are a little different than last time. Baylor took their first loss last week to UT, that one-point heartbreaker. What went wrong? What did you see that went wrong with them? Yeah, so I think we, we walked away from that game with more questions than we did answers. Uh, you know, we've transitioned into the 3-4 defense. That's something that we thought would really help us with the issues that we have with size. But as you saw last week, we really struggled with the downhill run. Deontay Foreman, we'll talk about this in a little bit, and we'll watch some of his runs, was downhill on us. And we just we didn't have anything to counter, didn't have anything to match it. We're going to have a very similar uh, opportunity to go out there today and, and stop the run. So we're going to go ahead and, and shoot over to that and look at some film. Heading into last week's matchup against UT, Baylor's defense finally got a taste of a respectable offense. The Longhorns ran over us at will. We finally saw the weakness of our defense, the defensive line, exposed. Deontay Foreman torched us on the ground with 32 carries for 250 yards. Unfortunately, it wasn't just the defensive line, but the fits from the safety and linebacker position off the edge that really hurt us. This is a team that has struggled on the road and needs to show up big today in a rivalry game. All right, let's start with Texas Tech and Texas. You know Texas Tech can score a lot of points, and they scored early in this one. Patrick Mahomes is going to find Cameron Batsoon, and he's able to get in for the touchdown. And Texas Tech had an early lead, but Texas has rallied now. And in the third, it's the University of Texas leading Texas Tech 31-23 that game in the third quarter. We'll see how that plays out over the next couple of hours. And on Thursday night, a closer one that, than maybe people expected. Oklahoma visiting Iowa State, second quarter. Iowa State up three, but Baker Mayfield, this has been the connection all year long. One of the best in the country to D.D. Westbrook from right here in Central Texas. Yo, Cameron, pride. Cameron, Texas, 65-yard touchdown. Oklahoma wins in a tight one, 34-24. to In other games today uh, in the Big 12, we've got Oklahoma State at Kansas State. That one at 2.30, same time Baylor and TCU kickoff. And Kansas is at West Virginia tonight at 6.00. The Big 12 scoreboard is brought to you, as always, by American Bank, and our thanks to them for the sponsorship. All right, in this week's vault, we are going way, way back, two years, <laughs> to 2014 and the game here at McLean Stadium between TCU and Baylor. And you said it was the most memorable game, memorable game you were ever part of. I remember watching this game, and you just you couldn't, you didn't want to get to the bathroom, you didn't yeah. want to do anything. 61-58, Baylor down 21 in the fourth quarter, rallies to beat TCU here at McLean Stadium, and the place was just going crazy all night. Chris Callahan kicked the game winner, unbelievable, what a win, and that is this week's vault here on Baylor Game Day. All right, so I guess in a nutshell, what are you what are you looking for today? What are your final thoughts here as we get ready for Baylor TCU after the last couple of years and the last couple of weeks here around Baylor? You know, nothing in particular. I just want to see if we respond. That I mean, that's all. I just want to see how we come out and play today. Is there is there going to be a unified front 
on the sideline for those guys? You know, I, I think so. You know, a lot of these guys, it's, it's, this whole year has been emotionally draining, man. I can only imagine what it's like to get up every day and just read the paper before going to practice, before going to work out, and just everything is draining. I, I don't know what these guys have left in them, and I just want to see how they respond because right now it's, it's, it's a pride thing. What about you? What do you want to see? Uh, for, well, just to kind of piggyback on that, it's hard for me to imagine that the 18- to 22-year-old kids aren't going to be pumped up about playing a right. football game today. Especially against TCU. Now, again, do the distractions help? No. But, I mean, they're going to be fired up. Now, conversely, if I know anything about TCU and Gary Patterson, yes, they're not as good as they normally are. They're going to be ready to play today. Yeah. And that defense is pro – I just have a feeling the TCU defense is going to play, play better today than they have all year long even though I still think Baylor's going to win. It's going to be a close, close game. TCU will be ready to play. And I think TCU was a little better defensively against Texas Tech last yeah. week, held them down, so maybe they've got a little momentum. I agree, 100%. Well, there's a defense that needs to be better today, and it's Baylor's. Yeah. They can't give up 250 yards rushing to one guy today. I mean, they, they can bend, but they cannot break. They can't give up those 40-yard big gaping runs. I mean, six, seven yards at a time, maybe let them get into field goal range, but you cannot give up those big home runs if you, if you want to win this game because TCU I can bet is going to try and run the ball a lot especially if you know the quarterbacks aren't playing well and if these dark skies bring more rain <laughs> right I think you're I think you're absolutely right all right let's take a, a prediction from you what do you think today uh you know I think it's like a you know 36 34 game I mean it's, it's not a high scoring game and yes compared to the SEC it does look like that but I, I don't think it's going to be crazy ridiculous you know you have to pick a winner right yeah <laughs> Everyone wins. You know, I just, like I said, I, that was a good try, though. I, I appreciate that. I just, I just want to see Baylor respond. If Baylor responds, we're good. They win 36-24? Yes. All right. <laughs> Surprisingly low-scoring game, Baylor wins 24-21. All right, what about you? I, I'm going to stick with Baylor. I, I think it will be 34-28. See, I, I think Baylor wins by a touchdown. I think they have to hold on a little bit at the so end. So I always think it's going to be a close game. Yeah, I, yeah. I think it's going to be closer. and Not quite 61-58, but, but closer and, uh, and a little more fun to watch than some of these other games. All right, so I guess in a nutshell, what are, you, what are you looking for today? What are your final thoughts here as we get ready for Baylor TCU after the last couple of years and the last couple of weeks here around Baylor? You know, nothing in particular. I just want to see if we respond. That I mean, that's all. I just want to see how we come out and play today. Is there is there going to be a unified front on the sideline for those guys? You know, I, I think so. You know, a lot of these guys, it's, it's, this whole year has been emotionally draining, man. I can only imagine what it's like to get up every day and just read the paper before going to practice, before going to work out, and just everything is draining. I, I don't know what these guys have left in them, and I just want to see how they respond because right now it's, it's, it's a pride thing. What about you? What do you want to see? Uh, for, well, just to kind of piggyback on that, it's hard for me to imagine that the 18- to 22-year-old kids aren't going to be pumped up about playing a right. football game today. Especially against TCU. Now, again, do the distractions help? No. But, I mean, they're going to be fired up. Now, conversely, if I know anything about TCU and Gary Patterson, yes, they're not as good as they normally are. They're going to be ready to play today. Yeah. And that defense is – I just have a feeling the TCU defense is going to play, play better today than they have all year long even though I still think Baylor's going to win. But that's going to be a close, close game. TCU will be ready to play. And I think TCU was a little better defensively against Texas Tech last yeah. week, held them down, so maybe they've got a little momentum. I agree, 100%. It. Well, there's a defense that needs to be better today, and it's Baylor's. Yeah. They can't give up 250 yards rushing to one guy today. I mean, they, they can bend, but they cannot break. They can't give up those 40-yard big gaping runs. I mean, six, seven yards at a time, maybe let them get into field goal range, but you cannot give up those big home runs if you, if you want to win this game because TCU I can bet is going to try and run the ball a lot especially if you know the quarterbacks aren't playing well and if these dark skies bring more rain <laughs> right I think you're I think you're absolutely right all right let's take a, a prediction from you what do you think today uh you know I think it's like a you know 36 34 game I mean it's, it's not a high scoring game and yes compared to the SEC it does look like that but I, I don't think it's going to be crazy ridiculous you know you have to pick a winner right yeah. <laughs> Everyone wins. You know, I just, like I said, I, that was a good try, though. I, I appreciate that. I just, I just want to see Baylor respond. If Baylor responds, we're good. They win 36-24? Yes. All right. <laughs> Surprisingly low-scoring game, Baylor wins 24-21. All right, what about you? I, I'm going to stick with Baylor, and I, th I think it'll be 34-28. See, I, I think Baylor wins by a touchdown. I think they have to hold on a little bit at the so end. So I always think it's going to be a close game. Yeah, I, yeah. I think it's going to be closer, and not quite 61-58, but, but closer and, uh, and a little more fun to watch than some of these other games.